For the past five months, yes. I've been on the medicine path in a strong way. Uh, so the medicine path, I mean plant medicine, uh, training under shamans from Colombia. Um, so this is yahe or ayahuasca. Mm -hmm. And this is um, many other medicines as well um, from frogs and toads and mm -hmm. plants and seeds. I want to describe one of such experience and I feel this mm, conflict. It's more in my head than my heart. Um, between you as my teacher and the shamans as my teacher and this plant medicines as my teacher. So one experience was with a seed called Jopo. And this is a seed that's administered through the nose. Immediately after, I began to purge, to vomit. Yes. And I vomited for so long, um, I felt despair. Um, I felt it kind of broke me in a way. And I started saying at one point um, the F curse word. Mm -hmm. And I was saying, fa, 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 mm -hmm. repeating it. And they put water on my head and the water burned. It was a lot of pain and despair. And then at one point it broke, the pain cleared, and my body began to move. And it felt like truth moving through me. At that moment, it felt like straight God, this was the most amazing thing that had ever happened. And I began to speak in voices, delivering messages to people. And in retrospect, a lot of these messages weren't per se true, mm -hmm. but they served some kind of role. For me, it felt like I threw up this part of myself that needed to tell people these things all the time. And afterwards, I could listen much better. And I felt maybe the biggest shift in my life after this from a single experience. So my question is, uh, I feel like it's done me so much good. Mm -hmm. And really, I want to ask for your blessing, but I only want to ask for what's meant to be. Um, so I'll begin by asking for your clarity on these experiences and, and these sort of practices so generally what happens when one takes uh, any substance that is that's putting the body under stress because it is a stress of some kind or the other whether it's I think it's called bufo right the, the frog saliva it is of the frog the secretion from the, the back. The secretion of the frog bufo, or whether it's that, or it is, I would, I would even go so far as to put LSD in the same container, or it is other quote-unquote medicines that are used in such processes. Whatever they are, they finally are putting the system under trauma of one kind or another. And the consciousness slash awareness slash perception, even to a certain extent, will try to leave the system or evade what's going on by yeah. moving somewhere else, not perceiving any more directly through the senses in a coherent way. That is one of the main reasons why I, I advise against these uh, processes, because what they do is that they're pushing something out of the system, certainly resulting in various altered states of consciousness which the system has not known until that point. But what happens is that when one practices these things over a longer period of time, there is a detachment from the system which a person who has done it over some time will never be able to solidly re-establish. I don't have a moral issue <coughs> about drugs or anything for that matter. <laughs> Everyone's free to do what they have to do. It isn't a moral issue, it is simply messing around with the consciousness because it's sending it into spaces which are 
which are not corporeal anymore. They're outside, they're cosmic, they're transcendental. Now, a transcendental experience is a nice experience to have, but if you have continuing transcendental experiences and you're floating more and more out of the system, you will lose connect with what is here. There's no doubt about it. If we want to be spaced out, then that is a choice, it's a personal choice, but it cannot get my blessings for sure. There is... I cannot bless something where I know is going to lead in the long run to a detachment from the materiality of the body, from the emotionality, from the... from the conceptual clarity and so on. Because what is said here, as you know, Yuna, is that it is in this moment, in a present state, totally tuned into the body and this reality, that the... that the consciousness can expand within the system and make the processes that are diametrically opposite to those that take you out of the system into a cosmic experience. So, while people do experiment, I still feel that as far as possible, no. And why? Because whatever cosmic experience you have, finally you're going to have to come back down here and deal with this reality, and this reality will never, ever, ever, ever hold up to that experience, in the sense you won't be able to... to deal with it completely, because what you've experienced outside the system is... is larger and bigger and wider. So when you are in the body, when you're here and now, you'll always be searching for that something which you won't, won't find. It is another language that has to be learned. It's like you're out there and you're speaking Russian. And you're trying to speak Russian to the cells of your body and they only understand English. So you'll be talking Russian all the time, but the body is not going to be doing what you want it to do because it's not understanding what's going on. See, one thing is very important. It's not a matter of feeling guilty about what one has done or regretting it or this... That's not what I'm... I'm looking at. I'm saying, however much you do these processes, unless you go live with your shaman master in the jungle and go through the ego breaking down processes which accompany these processes. It is not only about what you ingest and vomit out, it's also about actually serving the, the shaman, doing all the rituals that are with the shaman every day, year after year after year, which is an entirely different story than... than a one-sided approach which is undertaken more and more by people who are on the one hand ready to take the medicines and ingest, ingest them and experience and purge, but on the other hand are not ready to bend down. Because the, if you go back even 50 years, I mean, to even be... to even have a conversation of three sentences with a shaman is a big thing. So all such processes go hand in hand, don't forget this, they always go hand in hand with bending down, surrender. And they will not talk much about surrender, because surrender is not something that can be sold very easily. I'm not speaking now necessarily about your shamanic masters, but the experience is easy to sell, but the surrender that is needed hand in hand with the experience is very difficult. Who wants to surrender? Why would a modern person want to surrender, especially one coming from a... from a culture which is, you know, influenced by the Abrahamic... religions and ideals and... So, what is happening is that you are having your experiences and there is a form of surrender, I can also feel it, since I last saw you, I think, two years back or three years back. But the thing is that that is a surrender which is strictly conceptual in nature, because the experiences that you've had have led to certain conceptual vistas opening up. No? What I mean? 
in the sense that you've experienced that in a big way. You've experienced dissolution of identity, that's what happens basically. Where there's nothing there anymore that is actually feeling that much. In Bufo, for example, that's what happens mainly. It's that, uh, it's that ultimate uh, quick dissolution of identity drug. But what I'm saying is that the dissolution of identity when it is undertaken in this way is neither permanent nor is it actually contributing to the expansion of consciousness laterally inside the system here and now, present tense. Because why are you actually doing all these things? Because you're searching for a transcendental experience, you're searching for the truth. But the truth is not transcendental. I say clearly, and you've heard me say this before, the truth is here and now, it is a material presence, it is not a concept or an idea. It's a material presence, take it or leave it. It's a material presence, it's, here, it's the soul, it's just because no one with a beard looking very important has said it, doesn't mean it isn't like that. I mean, I can put on a beard for you if you want. <laughs> I even I threatened to do that once, because my students were not taking me seriously. Uh -huh. I don't think that's necessary for us to take you seriously, Maharishika. Well then, I mean, you can continue to do all this, but you'll, you'll be more and more spaced out. I'm not saying, I'm, let's not look at the past. Mm -hmm. Everything we do in this life has its meaning. But let's look from now on. You want to be a spaced out guy, kind of, and, and you know, just spaced out, then you can space out because those who are taking up this sadhana are present, they're, they're very tough, they're very present, they're focused, they're tuned inward, they're in surrender, they are, their contours are clear, they're aware of the other, of each one, they're very, very aware. They may not have the cultural tunings to deal with this culture or that culture or the other, but they're aware of the other as a being, very present. This is the spirituality of the future, anyhow. So, what has happened till now perhaps had to happen, because you had to have those experiences, which doesn't mean that it needs to continue. It is also a question of what you want to do with this life, I mean. You know, you are in this body, you're here and now. You are not a spirit flying around, you know what I mean? If you're in this body, then the experience of the perception must happen through the body here and now. Why else then is this here in the first place? And I really mean it, I don't have an... It is not at all a moral issue. Oh no, don't take drugs, you'll go to hell. No. You know? It isn't that, it's, it's a matter of where do you want your consciousness to be moving around? Up there or here? It's a choice. There are people, there are people who get... who are very enlightened, they're walking around floating a bit above the ground and... and at one point they just have to come back into the body. But if the body itself has been... has been attacked, and that attempt to, to, to cling on then at one point, because it meant the more it pushes you out and the more it pushes you out, the more you lose touch with what's going on, the more you actually are unable to even realize what is this other person actually saying or doing, or, like you can't feel the other. And you're a musician, you know, you, you need to do your work, I mean, you need to... you can't just be spaced out like this sitting, you need to organize yourself, you need to set things up, you need to be clear, you need to talk to the other, you need to hear what the other is saying, you need to be able to run an organization, you need to be present. If you continue like this, you will be absent. You won't be able to be present. In the long run, I mean. 
and you've had these experiences, so now you know everything. <laughs> you know that the, was you not know the, the truth. message I received. <laughs> you know the truth, you know emptiness, you know fullness, you know that, you know this. Okay, so then when, when is it going to be, reach the point where you say, okay, now I know it? Because there will never be a point, it will continue and continue and continue and continue until you're hardly in touch with... Because I've seen enough such people, so... In, you know. my, uh, in my younger days, about 12 years ago, I did a lot of LSD. And at that time, it did a lot of things for me. It broke me apart from some habits that were holding me back. Um, but it also certainly created disconnection and uh, made me more mental conceptual and less in touch. It freed my heart but made me less in touch with my emotions. I don't quite understand it. Um, the plant medicines feel different to me. They feel like they bring me to my heart. They bring me, uh, ego becomes difficult. It separates out what's my heart and what's ego and what's spirit and guidance, but also there's this general, it's a metaphor, but it's the whole kind of philosophy of it too, and I wonder how you respond to it, of this, um, you're confronting, our, our, I'm confronting my pain, I'm feeling, I'm experiencing, I'm going through the traumas in my body, I'm throwing them up yes. physically, but also metaphorically, um, and this process of confronting our the demons within us or the unconscious blocks or the things that separate us from truth um, is that something that you feel is part of um, this path all what you're speaking about about the demons you know all of that is actually the ego various faces of the ego and we have a choice in this life. Either we are continuously focused on the ego and trying to purge it and throw up and, 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 and look for it everywhere and cleanse it and clean it out and then find some more under the table and under the carpet and in the basement and underground and even further below and so on. There's, it's a never-ending process. The other choice we have is to simply focus on the truth which is the soul. Now, I don't want to discount a way to the truth. There are many ways to the truth. The question is, what are the losses along the way? If, in order to purge the system of the ego, I'm going to lose half the system, then it's a question mark. If they are going to give the whole practice, which includes the surrender practices of staying with the shaman, actually bending down, working with them, sometimes cooking for them, finding firewood, all of that over a period of some years, then it's a different story. But this is a sort of a bit of a, a shallow practice, I feel, just to get the experience, you know, take the bufo, lose identity, you know, come out of that, still alive, because it's a very intense experience, of course, and dissolution of identity is not a joke when it happens through taking a drug or something. Why? Why? The, the drug, the exhilaration, when you can actually bend down to that thing and that love that you experience and you can give to the other, why would you want to go into an transcendental experience, then you may as well do other practices as well and go into enlightenment and then, then come back here in ten years and say, I'm enlightened and now what? There are people sitting here who are enlightened and they also say, now what? So finally you will be brought to the Self-Realization process and when you come to that process, you will not have hundred percent body to sit with you because the body pays a price with these processes, it, surely it does. I mean, you look fit and good and all of that, I'm not mm -hmm. saying that, you know, you're... But over a period of time, the brain is affected, no question about it. And if you are a shaman in the, in the Amazon and you're just wandering around with a stick and screaming, you know, 
expletives to the birds, that's one thing. But if you want to be a musician in New Orleans, then New Orleans is where you live now, right? Yes. Then, you know, then you have to rethink your processes of uh, truth finding. Of course, it's not easy to be in the present moment. It's not so exotic and so colorful and so intense. But it is a process that will gradually take you into a state of joy because you are not looking at the pain, you're looking at the truth. I mean, you can look at the pain, you want to spend the rest of your life digging up more pain, you'll always find more. You will not stop purging because there's no end to the attack of the ego. It will grow and grow, it'll find new ways of entertaining you. <laughs> but you know, words that I say have very little power and weightage against the intensity of an experience like Bufo or like even LSD. It's my word against LSD, it's your experience of truth against your medicines. You're not sick, you don't need any medicine. I'm saying not to look back, I'm saying to look forward. So I cannot give you my blessings for those kind of processes. Thank you for your openness and your words. I hope that my words penetrate through the medicines. And I hope you don't throw them up again. <laughs>